Welcome back to my Complete AP Chemistry course. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the mass of compounds. And we're going to use some vocabulary here. Uh, when we have ionic compounds, these are compounds that are made up of a metal and a nonmetal, or a, a cation and an anion. We're going to find that uh, those have what we call a formula mass. So we're going to calculate the formula mass. So let's try aluminum oxide here. Now the way that we do that is, is we just multiply the subscripts that are there by the individual uh, atomic masses for each element. So for aluminum that would be about 27.0 and so that's when you multiply by the 2 you get 54.0 and for oxygen we multiply 3 by about 16.0 and we get about 48. So the total formula mass for that compound is just the sum of those. So add it together and you get 102.0 atomic mass units. And so that's the formula mass of aluminum oxide. We can do the same thing for magnesium nitrate. Even though we have a polyatomic ion, it basically works the same way. We have one atom of magnesium here and we're going to multiply that by magnesium's atomic mass. Uh, about 24.3. You might notice that I generally round these atomic masses off to the tenths place for these problems. Uh, that usually works pretty well without introducing too much error. So we get 24.3 for that one. For nitrogen, we have two of those atoms. You know, there was a one here, but you know, it's multiplied by two, so we have two. And nitrogen is about 14.0, so we get 28.0 for the nitrogens. And do you see how many oxygen atoms we have? We have 3 times 2, so that's going to be 6. And we multiply that by 16.0 to get 96.0. You, you add those together to get the total formula mass, which is 148.3 atomic mass units. Now, you might remember that Joseph Proust, uh, over 200 years ago, was one of the first to discover that uh, a compound has the same percentage mass uh, for an element uh, no matter where that compound is found. Well, using this formula mass idea, we can actually determine what those percentages are. So let's try this with aluminum oxide. Now the way that we do that is we just take, in the case of aluminum, the percent mass, we take the aluminum number, the 54 that we got, and we're going to divide that by the total formula mass, which is 102.0. So when you do that, we get that aluminum is 52.9% of the mass of that compound. Do the same thing for oxygen. We just take the 48.0 that we got and divide it by the total mass, the 102, and we get 47.1%. So in aluminum oxide, it's 47.1% oxygen. We can do the same thing for any compound. So magnesium nitrate works the same way. We take the 24.3 uh, for magnesium and the 28 for the nitrogen and the 96 for the oxygen and divide them all by the total formula mass, which is 148.3, and we get the individual percent masses for each element. So for magnesium, that's about 16.4%. For nitrogen, it's 18.9%. And for oxygen, when you divide that out, it's about 64.7%. So that means that if you could take the magnesium nitrate there and uh, harvest out just the magnesium, you'd get 16.4% of the original mass of the compound. That's what that means. And likewise for those other elements. Well, for molecular or covalent compounds, it works the same way. It's the exact same thing, except we have a different vocabulary word. We call it a molecular mass. Since they're considered molecules, we have molecular mass. And so we can do the same thing for water. We take hydrogen, and we have two atoms there. We multiply the two by 1.0 for its atomic uh, mass, and we get 2.0. And the same thing for oxygen. We multiply it, the 1 by 16 and we get about 16. And so the total molecular mass is 18 AMU. Do the same thing for sucrose, for sugar. 
It's a much more complex molecule, but it works the same way. We take the 12 carbons and multiply that by 12.0, its atomic mass, and you get 144. Hydrogen, take the 22 and multiply it by 1.0, and we get 22.0. And then the same thing for oxygen, we get 176. You add these together, and we get 342 AMU. And once again, we can find the percent mass in the exact same way as we did for ionic compounds. For hydrogen, we're going to take this 2 that we got here and divide it by the 18 total. So when you do that, it's about 11.1%. And for oxygen, it's the same thing. We take the 16.0 and divide by 18, and we get 88.9%. And of course, just to check our work, we want to double check and make sure that those two percentages add up to 100 or, or something very, very close to it. And of course they do. Your percentages should always add up to 100 or, or very, very close to 100%. So that does work. Can we do the same thing for sucrose? Uh, I believe we can. So if we take a look at, for example, carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, we'll take, you know, we're going to divide them all by the 342. Carbon will be 144. Hydrogen will be 22 divided by 342. Oxygen is the 176. We'll go in here. And when, when we divide those out, we get that carbon would be 42.1% of this compound. And hydrogen is about 6.43%. And oxygen is about 51.5% of sucrose. And once again, those percentages add up to something very, very close to 100%. Well, I hope you learned something. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video, learned something about the molecular mass and formula mass and how to do per percent mass uh, calculation. Please give me a thumbs up, and I hope to see you again in future lessons in my complete AP Chemistry course. This is Jeremy Krug, and join me again here on my channel where we can learn some more chemistry together.